We have the most expensive gas in Europe. We were in a, an energy crisis and we have to do something about it. Germany and France have about 150 days of stored gas. We only have 12. In cold winters, we've come within hours of having to switch off industry. We clearly have shale in the UK if we were to exploit the shale. Almost unlimited supplies for the next 40 or 50 years. Not only does that give us energy security, so we're not dependent on Russia or the Middle East, it also means that the revenues generated by that gas stay in the UK. It clearly has the possibility of having a huge impact on the UK in a relatively short period of time with very little impact. There is a huge amount of controversy, obviously. What we need to be able to do is to show people that the nightmare pictures they paint in their minds are completely untrue. The United Kingdom has huge shale gas deposits. The government estimates shale gas could create more than 64,000 jobs. The US has been drilling for shale for 20 years, and their economy has been transformed. One drilling rig facilitates about 130 jobs, from the drilling, the fracking, all the service industries. It's been a great opportunity for a lot of youth in the area, you know, to find jobs and not have to move away from home. It's not just the people who are employed in the industry itself extracting the gas, it's the people employed in chemicals, employed in steel, employed in aluminium that creates a, a ripple effect through the economy. And I think that's one of the main reasons that the UK government is so keen that this, this gets developed. You know, if ever there was a time we needed it, that time is now. You can go and see where we're drilling gas and oil, and you see farmlands, and you see green space, you see woodlots. This is a uh, finish site completed about two years ago. This is how it all finishes up. It's quite noisy during the, the actual frack, which takes about a week. And there's a bit of commotion when they're doing the drilling, but the, the finished article, there's no noise. It, visually, there's very little impact on the, the countryside here. It's really insubstantial, as you can see. In the first decade, it would take about 32 wind turbines to generate the same energy created by these four gas wells. The local residents would be up in arms about it, and that's what you would need to give the same sort of energy output that they're currently getting from those shale wells. To access shale gas, the first step is to drill the well. The time taken varies depending on the site, but typically drilling takes around 20 days. The well has different sized pipes placed inside each other. In the end, we'll have something that has multiple levels of steel and cement that provides protection for safety, to our freshwater table and other formations in the well bore. Step two is hydraulic fracturing. Gas is released when the shale rock is cracked open using high pressure fluid. A tiny amount of this is made up of dilute everyday chemicals. One and a half percent is sand and 98% is water. It's the water and sand that make up 99.5% of this fluid. This all happens thousands of feet underground and takes about a week. The gas flows back up to the surface through the pipes and all vital signs are monitored from the control centre. The third stage is production. The fracking and drilling equipment leave site. What's left is small wellheads and a pipeline. The production site runs for the life of the well, often around 30 years. I think in terms of the safety of operation of uh, unconventional gas wells in the UK, uh, the two big issues that people always cite are earthquakes and water contamination. There was the whole famous story about the Blackpool earthquake with Quadrilla's well. That earthquake, in inverted commas, that tremor, was way below the levels that you would detect. It was way below the levels we have every day in the UK from shifts in old mine workings. Now to give a bit of context, uh, within months of those earthquakes in Blackpool, we had larger earthquakes associated with mining in Staffordshire. The other thing is that was an incident that I think that would not happen today because the systems that are now in use are much, much tighter. Second issue is the water contamination issue. Opponents of hydraulic fracturing are concerned that gas and wastewater could contaminate drinking water. However, modern techniques ensure this doesn't happen. Firstly, the well is protected against any leaks into the water table. The shaft has multiple layers of protection, half-inch thick steel, 
one inch thick concrete, more half inch steel, more thick concrete. Secondly, the hydraulic fracturing itself happens between one and five kilometers underground. There are thousands of feet of solid rock between the frac and any drinking water, ensuring the shale gas can only reach the surface through the well pipe. And thirdly, wastewater is now 100% recycled. In hydraulic fracturing, it's possible to clean up that water and then reuse it for further fracking or further drilling. All of the safeguards ensure the wastewater cannot come into contact with any drinking water. 20 years of experience and development in the United States has assured that modern hydraulic fracturing in the UK presents no risk to water supplies. We actually believe that well managed, the risks are so minimal as to be non-existent. I can say after you know six and a half years into this venture that, that I have, I've seen no environmental, long-term environmental effects of any kind. Our water's still good, we have springs here, natural springs, we have natural wells. We've had no problems whatsoever. Environmentally, no air problems, no odor problems, no noise problems. So actually, you don't even know they're here. The movie Gasland blamed hydraulic fracturing for gas in some Pennsylvania water supplies. However, the film left out key facts and the movie has been discredited. I'm not a proponent of the Gasland movie. I think it was a farce. They, um, there, was, there was natural gas in the water system for, for 100 years. That was not because of fracking. I've got references, I've looked at this in great detail. An actual fact, gas has been associated with water in Pennsylvania since the 1800s. Ineos believe their experience and expertise best places them to lead on extracting shale gas in the UK. The people who made the breakthroughs 15, 20 years ago here in the US are on our team and they're the ones who are going to help us make sure we learn from the 20 years of experience that's been developed here in the US. So we're not starting from first base, we're actually out there with a significant advantage straight away. We bring a huge amount of production capability, a lot of uh, understanding of how to manage environmental systems very, very safely. The most exciting thing about shale gas is that it's 50% cleaner than coal. You look at coal mining, uh, you look at nuclear, you know there are issues with all of the alternative options and I think what we have to do is put the risks of this new development in the context of the alternative options. We're in a, an energy crisis effectively, we're running out of North Sea gas, we're dependent on more and more imported gas, the price of gas and therefore electricity is rising all of the time and we have to do something about it and we think the development of unconventional gas has to be the right way forward.